So now continuing on this theme and idea that animals are complex, that they're uh, well organized, we're going to now be talking about a different idea, but still a result of the complexity that we mentioned prior. The next idea, the next theme to talk about is the idea of animal body plans. Body plans one is what we'll entitle this next flow chart. And what we mean by body plans is the following. A body plan is just going to be in an animal, a particular set of morphological and developmental traits. So again, morphological would refer to the shape uh, in result of the development. So we'll combine morphological plus developmental, developmental, particular set, morphological and developmental traits. That's essentially what a body plan uh, is the manifestation of. It is the result of morphological and developmental traits. Now, what's of interest to us as a biology student, hopefully, and as a, a biologist, is the fact that animals have features that can be compared. So our job in order to understand body plans is based off of the fact that we need to compare key animal features. Now, you'll see what I mean as we get through the examples of these features and these body plans specifically. But for right now, just understand that we need to do a comparison in order to understand the morphological and developmental traits that a particular animal in question has. Now, that comparison of key features would mean that features must mean something. What do features mean? What are we looking for? Well, we're looking for specifically key animal evolutionary steps, okay? Key animal evo steps is what we would like to call it. And what we mean by evolutionary steps is simply key moments of the morphological and developmental history of an animal that made that animal unique, that made that animal um, complex. And just like the question we've been asking ourselves, why are animals unique? Why are they complex? Well, one of the reasons is their body plans. Why are their body plans important? Well, their body plans are a result of morphological and developmental traits that can be compared for the key evolutionary steps that we saw. Okay. A lot of words there, but let's apply what I just said here. It's going to make a lot more sense as I refer back to it several times over. So this is our working idea of a body plan. Let's apply it. So, an idea of a body plan can be based off of the differentiation, something we should know uh, a good amount of now since I explained it uh, prior, differentiation, specialization in other words, of cells, and cells will differentiate into tissues, and tissues will combine together and differentiate into, of course, organs, okay? No news here. Differentiation of cells, tissues, and organs. How does that relate to the morphological and developmental set of traits that an animal has? Now, this is what we mean here. First of all, we have to reiterate something. We have to reiterate that all animals, this is a key characteristic of animals. Second time we're saying this, thus it's probably important. Something to remember. All animals with specialized cells. So all animals have very nicely specialized cells, all animals have cells that are highly regulated in terms of their gene expression, and thus they are specialized. Okay, now, the first major animal step, uh, first major evolutionary step in animal development was the idea of differentiation, but specifically of tissues and organs, okay, going beyond the cellular level. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So, let me write this down as first major step in animal evolution, EVO for evolution. So let's look at two examples and compare them. One example would be the periphera, P-O-R-I-F-E-R-A, which are just sponges, in other words, commonly known as sponges, versus a separate class of animals known as eumetazoa. This is our first great divide in the animal world. And this great divide, this great comparative nature between periphera and eumetazoa is based off of the evolutionary step, the evolutionary key here of tissue differentiation and organ differentiation. What do I mean by that? Well, periphera are animals, very simple animals. You're going to notice periphera are the exception to every animal rule. Periphera are very old, 
uh, animals that do not, do not, do not have clearly defined tissues plus organs. So they do not have clearly defined tissues and organs. But I want you to remember something. Periphera are still animals. Don't forget this. They're still animals. They're just very low forms of animals, okay? Now, what does this have to do with body plans? This has a lot to do with body plans. This is a body plan. Not having tissues and organs is a key evolutionary step because you, metazoa, do have tissues and organs. Look at this word here. You means true. Metaphor right now, don't worry about it. But the idea of zoa, think of where you go to see animals. You go to see animals as a kid at the zoo. Why do you think they call it a zoo? Zoo is literally the, rat, the Latin root for animals. You metazoa simply means true animals. And that's exactly our key evolutionary step here. We have true animals and we have non-true animals, okay, to compare to each other. Why are these considered true animals versus these not being true animals? Well, that's because you metazoa do have clearly defined tissues and organs. So we'll say do have clearly defined tissues and organs. Tissues plus organs, okay? So that's our first evolutionary step. Look at what we do here. We compare animal features. We're comparing features very much so between periphera, which are sometimes just labeled as part of the metazoa class of animals. So metazoa would mean not true, so we lack this U root. So metazoa are a type of periphera. A periphera are a type of larger class known as metazoa. Don't worry about that distinction just yet. But periphera are simple animals that do not have tissues and organs. But you metazoa do. So right now we have a divide. We have a morphological and developmental characteristic to base a division off of, to base a body plan off of. The idea of either having tissues and organs or not. That's our first body plan to focus on, and that's what we covered here with the idea of the differentiation of cells, tissues, and organs. Do sponges have differentiated cells? Yes. Why do they have that? Because I said it right here. All animals with specialized cells, look at periphery. Periphery are still animals. Don't get me wrong, but their tissues and organs are just lacking. They don't have those, okay? So that covers our first body plan. In the next video, uh, I'll conclude body plans one by looking at the idea of symmetry.